Tuesday, Chairman, Operator, Doc, Operator Dr. Kemal Tekden, CV will be presented. Operator Dr. Kemal Tekden was born in Kayseri in 1959. Uh, he received his first and sector education there in 1970. 87, he graduated from Istanbul University School of Medicine. Until 2011, he opened many health and educational institutes and he has been the founder or the director of many different NGOs. He is the um, publisher of the A1 journal and he is the president of the executive board of Tuesday. He is the procedure. Uh, well, he is also the executive board uh, president of the company Tech Dan Fan, which is the producer of the uh, Arturo Dirilish soap opera. And he has two books which were published. Distinguished Minister, dear guests. Tuesday, Chairman Operator Dr. Kemal Tekden will take the floor to make their inaugural speech. Well, distinguished rector of Medeniyet University, provincial Na national education director, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear education and training representatives. Welcome to the first International Congress for Gifted and Talented. You are more than welcome. Well, in terms of the nature of its scope, um, probably this is one of the most comprehensive conventions in a very comprehensive field of study. We have eight international participants who will be enlightening us about our field. I'm sure of that. The, the, the information they will provide would be very relevant. And we will have 83 oral presentations, which will be very important input in terms of the field. Nine posters and 15 workshops in a total number of three days, hopefully, and may God help us when while we're completing that. We wanted to focus on uh, the social part as well. Thank you very much for joining us for the future of our children and for the future of our country. I do hope that this will yield many productive results. This convention is an opportunity for us and for our country, and hopefully we will make use of that in the best manner possible. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, every child, we know that every child is talented and valuable. We do believe in that fact. Uh, recently, a mother uh, was asked a question uh, whose child was uh, in the hospital. Well, he had pneumonia. He was suffering from pneumonia, and it was her fourth child. And I asked her, well, you know, this is a sick child. Uh, this is fourth for you. Let me take that child, and I'm going to give you a very valuable diamond in return. And she gave me the strictest uh, look. She said, never, ever, I won't trade this child of mine for anything in the world. So, you know, I understood she has something more valuable than the most valuable diamonds in the world. This is the same case for all of the mothers. But as a country, we 
to what extent are we aware of the fact that all of the children are more valuable than oil, diamonds, money? Well, we call these children are above ground treasures, but there are some very special children among those overall children. So if we, just like we saw in the movie, if they don't, uh, if they're not evaluated properly, then they have the strength to become the leaders who will pave the way for better futures for the countries. But this is the biggest challenge. So maybe the biggest waste is the waste of our children. And these children, they have the superior talent, set of talents and the intellectual uh, capacity. So if our attitude, if our approach is not worthy of them, then in this case, in these cases, they will be uh, below what they deserve to be in. And our governor recently, you know, after I told all this, told me that Kemal Bey, whatever we have to do, let's act very fast because we're wasting a lot of time. We're spending a lot of time, and that's a pity. Indeed, that's the case. Every spent day. Uh, means wasting of these talents of these children. So in Turkey, we don't have a certainty in our country. We don't have which way to go. And that is the responsible factor for that. For example, even in terms of the naming of these children, we don't have a common terminology. How to train them, how to educate them in separate classes, the gifted or maybe the genius ones. Or is it going to be a mixed classroom? So it's not been uh, even set. In terms of the discipline, our nation has established the strongest discipline system. But today, we don't know how to implement that. Some of them you know, simply educate their children in a free manner, whereas some others go for pressure. Now, but these children fall into the group which we call the disadvantaged children group. Well, if their education and training is not proper, then they might cause trouble as well. So it's such a sensitive issue that we have to join forces, including all of the stakeholders, the NGOs, the relevant institutions, so that we will have a roadmap for the future. Otherwise, we will be burying our heads in the sand, and that means even more wasted years. The families are in great trouble. That's their problem. How are we uh, going to educate these children? So in normal, shall they go to normal schools with normal classes? But it's not sufficient for them. So you know, they need more. They need more methods. We have many families who are asking for this. The educators, you know, they are also in uh, search in a certain trouble because they don't know you know how to train these children or sometimes approach them so on one hand uh, there is an uh, sort of a molding education uh, attitude which is sort of looking in a stand standardized manner on the other hand we have the groups of fairs when they dominate children then it means we lose them Picasso says that all children can paint, but when we teach them how to paint, then we are actually killing, killing that talent. So when we tell them, you know, when we put them in a shape, in a format, this is how, how you paint, then that talent of painting is gone forever. Another Western thinker says that don't teach children how to build ships. Just give them the passion of uh, going to traveling to distances, and then they will construct and establish their own fleet. So training these children will offer twice the benefits. The first one is 
Well, we save them from being trouble for us in the future. The second thing is they will be sort of the leaders, the spare your people which spare your talents in the future so that they will pave the way. Let's have a look at the history. Let, you know, let's review the history. There was a guy called Terman. In 1925, he says that he established his own system all throughout the world. However, between 1903 and 1901 in Istanbul, he spent such years, some of his uh, life in Istanbul, and he looked at the Enderun type of schools. Uh, Enderun is sort of, you know, according to the Westerns, it is the humanities base for the Ottomans. That's a great uh, description. You know, can we copy the same system for today? Obviously not. But at this point, Sometimes many people, you know, would like to adopt a Finnish system. You know, they made a leap in this respect. And some people oppose and they go for Singapore method. Three decades ago, they were a mess in terms of education. We, do we really necessarily have to adopt an international model? Why don't we come up with a new model, a brand new model of our own? So this is, uh, you know, this is food for thought. We should really contemplate about that. So maybe this is going to be one of the top subjects of the Congress, the convention, or, you know, the, uh, you know, the old school uh, says that, the representative says that. Uh, discovery, education means uh, discovery uh, and growth or evolution. So if you don't discover a person or if you don't understand a person with all the properties, then you can't develop that person or discover that person. For example, the teacher comes into the classroom and teaches, not even uh, glancing at the faces of the children. What would, what benefit or good would that do? Well, of course, there is a high cost of training these gifted children, but the yield, the benefit, would be perfect in terms of making lips, which would be extended and stretching for. Uh, many centuries. This is what we see in the developed countries. We call them in the above ground treasures. When we look at the global cases, those who are not aware of their abo above ground treasures and cannot utilize them sufficiently, they can't simply keep them, retain them. They become uh, simply, uh, they are they're vanishing. Be Niger, for example, in terms of these treasures, uh, they are very rich in uranium. Uh, and in terms of gold mines, they are the second richest company, uh, country in the world. But right now, you know, they're the poorest because, you know, they can't simply uh, help that because uh, they are colonized. You know, they can't make use of their uh, richness in terms of the, the treasures and the human resources. Ladies and gentlemen, in the short movie, you saw that there has to be the sufficient environment uh, for the uh, um, discovery of the uh, genius. You know, there should be an enhancing environment where there is more interest and curiosity and liberalization. If we simply train our children, educate our children to be uh, simply uh, their minds relying on or dependent on a certain school of thought, that's what we had the nightmare on 15th of July. Then, you know, that's what we have to take into consideration. So, information, knowledge, contemplation, and action. These three should be together. So, we are simply loading our children with knowledge right at the moment. But in terms of a contemplation or opinion or idea and action, that's where we suffer. So where to start? Uh, you know, we have Rodin's the uh, thinking man sculpture. Someone has to remove that because, you know, uh, it is located in the garden of the asylum, uh, the psychological uh, hospital. And, you know, because otherwise it has different connotations. That's where we have to start for the change in Turkey. Thank you, Suleyman. 
Sultan Suleyman the Magnificent was asked, are you very successful or not, according to you? And he said, even if I'm not successful with anything, well, I enabled a poet called Baki to get trained and I can't be proud enough and Baki is given to Sinan the architect as a trainee and Baki the poet says I followed what Sinan did on stone and I did it on the words so he became genius so the magnificent Kanuni's time period was full of geniuses because the geniuses were enabled to unveil and the works of those periods when we look at them oh, one American minister came once and he scrutinized them Suleimani Sultan Ahmed the works of those periods you know and he was asked how what he thinks about these works and he says well I am astonished and I really like them they say why are you astonished because I can't understand when the grandchildren where the great children of those people great people are well the architecture the construction works of those days how are they related to those geniuses we have to ask these questions. Science, religion, and art are separated from each other, and we think we are doing something good. However, when we watch Suleimania Mosque of Mimar Sinan, Sinan the architect, is this a work, a piece of art? Is that a work of science or religion well it is a blend of three of them actually it is a great piece of art it has a profound science and it is also a work for religion a work of religion so these three are blended this is how we should perceive it today as well and if we do not train and educate our children with national mentality if they don't feel they belong to this country well whatever we do they will go to other countries and they will support other countries and they will say wherever I gain my money is my car home and Turkey will just stay as it it is. These children are idealist children. They are idealists when they are young. But when we don't support them when they are young, well, if we do not put a dynamo, put an engine next to them, then these children will turn their ideals into the benefits and they can go into a vicious circle. Therefore, they should be grown as idealist people and they should should benefit the humanity and our values. This will save them and this will enable them to serve for our country and our world. So people who are trained with such a national perception, if they are genius, well, yes, if they have the potential to genius, to be a genius, they can be genius and they can give messages to the universe, but on behalf of their country as well. All the geniuses are supported by their own civilizations. So we can't deny it. Now I want to talk about Tuesday. Tuesday it was founded four or five years ago and Tuesday uh, works uh, for these children. Dev Tuesday is devoted to these children and this uh, is a national strategy for Tuesday. We're working to make it a national strategy and we are only working for it and hopefully we can realize it enough and with your support with your prayings as well this will be enabled Tuesday is our foundation and whatever title we have we 
have to be aware that we are responsible for these children. May and maybe we have to support Tuesday in this regard. Well, of course, Tuesday by itself can't achieve a lot. But with your support, with the support of the government, Tuesday will be gaining more power and it can reach many places, maybe even beyond the borders of Turkey. I would like to thank you. First of all, I would like to thank our dear protocol for being here. And I would like to thank those who have been involved with the works like Mr. Ari from Tubitak. And I would like to thank the keynote speakers, foreign speakers, and people who will be delivering presentations. And I would like to thank the devoted people of the organizing committee, Nuri, Özkan, Önder, Avcı Bey, and all the others. Thank you. And you participants, thank you for being here. And thank you, our children, for being here. They are here to show themselves. And thank you, members of the press. Our sponsor is Take Ten Group. Thank you. And Take Ten Film produced the movie we have shared with you in the beginning. And Habib Kızıltaş, thank you very much. The theme of the Congress is Revival with Above Ground Treasures. I hope that we will uh, achieve our target, and I hope that our Congress will give us great benefits and will benefit our country. Thank you very much, and regards to all of you.